So our theme has been for the last, this is the eighth week, for the last seven weeks, taste the grass on the summit. And as I've said, I think I'm going to make an impassioned plea for this particular principle. So let's get to identifying the principle and then get to the class. But again, I think this one requires more of a change of behavior than any of the others we've talked about. Um, some are familiar, uh, and maybe this by, by word is familiar, but I don't think for many of us by action it is. So again, as we say each week, as the introduction, you'll never taste the grass. If you never reach a summit, you'll never reach a summit unless you learn how to climb. And this is all about the climb teaching and discussing and learning how to climb our individual mountains. So the, the particular grass on this summit may be specific to you and not to the rest of us. Yes, ideally and ultimately, and maybe some of us even will participate in a climb in some point in the future, but before that, we certainly can still climb. So whether natural, spiritual, physical, emotional, climbing is all the same. Some, some of it is literal, most of it is figurative. So it begins with hope, it continues with faith, but again, it demands a plan. And that's what these last couple of weeks have been, out, been about, planning to climb. Tonight, we utilize the seventh of the nine principles of mountain climbing. We begin with a clear vision. We then implement adequate conditioning. We then bring the right gear and provisions. We notify others of our schedule and our travel plans specifically. We call those accountability partners. We travel light and we travel in the light. And now we come to principle seven, which is take time for adequate rest and nutrition. <clears throat> and you'll understand more why I think this one requires more of a, I think, impassioned plea than the rest. Whether physical or, or spiritual, mountain climbing demands that our, we prepare for such an ascent. In order to maintain momentum, and this sounds like it doesn't make sense. It sounds like it's contrary, or at least contradictory. In order to maintain momentum, one must take time to rest and replenish. In order to keep moving forward, you got to stop. Sounds silly, doesn't it? America, built on a concept of democracy and freedom. America. There's actually no need to, quote unquote, make America great again. America is great. And it's been set aside for greater things by God. The word says this, after the waters had receded from the, off the face of this land, the Americas, it became a choice land above all other lands chosen of the Lord. But that doesn't mean that everything about America is great. Consider these concepts. Great authors may not be able to garden, but that they still are great authors. Great tennis players may not be able to sew a hem or stitch a, a ripped pair of pants, but they're still great tennis players. Great surgeons may not even know how to swim, but they're still great surgeons. Great mothers may not be, well, I won't even finish that sentence. Great mothers can do anything, so we won't use great mothers as an example. America's greatness does not immunize her against her own flaws, and that's where I'm going to put a little focus. This country was built with great effort. This country was built with great enthusiasm. This country was built with great attitudes and continues to build itself on effort, enthusiasm, and attitude. However, it's those same attributes that may have, have been the reason that we've created one glaring weakness. All of us, born into if you've been born in this country, born into, and if you've immigrated here, raised in a land of greatness. And sometimes it's that type of greatness that motivates. And in this case, motivates our being hard driving, focused on results, get the job done at all costs, even in sacrificing everything in order to finish the job with, a, with an attitude that will rest when we die. 
And that sacrificing all, sacrificing all often manifests itself in our levels of stress and anxiety. What a society we've become as it's defined by anxiety. At, at the very least, that's one of the offshoots of, of being so focused on working so hard. So, having said that, this week's principle is especially critical to all of you. And I'll say to all of us, because I certainly am a candidate for any discussion about not being able to rest. We have some undoing to do. To do. We have some unlearning to learn. We have some reprogramming to program. We have to. We absolutely must find our own personal pause button. And it can't be, I'll get to it later, situation. It has to be adopted immediately, urgently, right now, as you climb your mountain. Not after. As you climb your mountain, you have to adopt rest as an activity. Or you'll never make it to the summit. You'll never taste the grass. There's a phrase that's used in conversations today that apply to all of us. It's called confirmation bias. <laughs> confirmation bias is a tendency to interpret new data or evidence that you receive as a validation or endorsement of your existing beliefs or theories. Meaning you and I can be sitting side by side with different opinions, hear the same thing, and use it to confirm how we already feel. And we turn to each other, hearing what we hear heard, opposite corners, turn to face each other and say, see, I told you, that's confirmation bias. That's why most watch or listen to news feeds that support their current beliefs. They're not looking to change, they're looking to confirm. Most want to be validated. Most want their rightness reinforced. So in a society which values results most, it only makes sense that rest and nutrition would become the casualties. More critically, we all become the victims. It's our own confirmation bias that has all of us leaning into this societal misstep that I'm addressing tonight, embracing what to me is obvious. It's unwise, it's unhealthy, it's harmful. And we embrace it as a way of life. I'll rest when I die, but I'm not gonna stop right now. Principle number seven, take time for rest and nutrition. And the reason I make this case as an impassioned plea is it's scriptural. But in a culture in the Western part of the world, it's not something that's natural. It's no wonder it, it's a philosophy that comes out of the East and even out of the European countries. I'll tell you an example a little bit later of a, a man that I knew. Principle number seven, take time to rest for rest and nutrition. Point number one, give permission to, to thyself. Give permission to yourself to enjoy the climb. Never rush. All climbers know this fact. Never rush. Haste proves to be a fatal mistake, or can be at least. The goal of the summit is reached through steady patience. Just consider the story of the tortoise and the hare. Slow and steady. Continue moving slowly, steadily. Journeying upward along the path is best accomplished by appropriate pace based on the individual's abilities, the individual's skills. Adequate rest defined by the number of pauses and the length of those pauses. And appropriate pauses create more enjoyable, more successful journeys. Consider you're resting, you're sitting on the, on the side of the mountain and you take that time. As you've been scaling, maybe with your back to the outside, you rest and you look out and you see now views that you may have missed while you were, while you were climbing. Enjoy the climb. And lastly, journeying up the pathway is best accomplished through pace, rest, and nutrition. 
this is specific to the journey and the individual who's journeying yourself. So the blue writing in this particular slide, and we're not going to visit the blue writing after this one. And this is where I'm going to make a left turn with our class tonight. So again, never rush. The word says this, be not hasty in thy spirit. The summit or the goal is reached through steady patience. The word says this, God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of sound mind. Steady patience. Journeying upward along the pathway is best accomplished through pace. With patience, the race that is set before us appropriate pace adequate rest rest in the lord wait patiently for him that's so hard that's so hard to let go of control and give to god his schedule appropriate pauses come unto me you who are heavy laden and i will give you rest appropriate pauses and nutrition the spiritual nutrition is there anything better anything greater Anything more fulfilling than I am the bread of life. Continuing on with giving permission to enjoy. Climbing follows the same rules as living a happy life. Listen to this. Same rules. Eat great food. Sleep well. Be comfortable. Life doesn't get better than that. And it doesn't get more complex than that. We may make it complex, but it needn't be. The most successful means in which to experience Eat great food, sleep well, be comfortable is remain on the plan's course, maintain the plan schedule, and pace oneself individually according to oneself. <clears throat> Here's what the word says. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Right from the slide, eating great food and he said unto them come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while for there were many coming and going and they had no leisure so much as to eat be comfortable remember a sister sent me that verse and asked me to write an article for the gospel news on that verse and it really enlightened me in writing it I will give you a peaceful sleep, surrounded by safety. Again, straight from the slide we just read, sleeping well. The word of God supports everything we're going to hear about climbing. When I said my foot is slipping, your unfailing love, Lord, supported me. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. Straight from the slide, pace yourself according. Rule number two, or key point number two, rest provides reinforcements. Rest is defined as a state of repose. Cease from work, cease from activity. Given today's life pace, most struggle to know how to rest. I often used to tell Candace, it takes me two days on a vacation to even start to rest. The demands of exhaustion must be met. They must be appeased. They have to be. The innate desire to sprint to the finish, you have to overcome that. We start to see the, the summit and we start to go quicker or faster thinking, I'm almost there. Don't break your pace. Stay on course. Exhaustion causes confusion. Exhaustion gets your brain swirling. Swirling starts panic. Panic starts confusion. Confusion causes serious matters to easily be neglected. Every individual has to break for some time and rest straight from the word. And we're going to come back to these, these same slides to show you the Lord has already reinforced mountain climbing in his scripture. Exodus 33 says this, and he said, my presence shall go with thee. I will give you rest. Exhaustion must be appeased. 
Let my soul be at rest again, for the Lord has been good to me. He saved me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. And so I walk in the Lord's presence as I live here on earth. Rest is a state of repose. Pick your feet up. Prop them up on a, on a rock and rest and take in the Lord's beauty. Figuratively, literally, you are my hiding pit place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Straight from the slide, cease from activity. Take time to rest. Yesterday, Candace woke up, or excuse me, Sunday, Candace woke up not feeling well. And as the morning went on, because she gets up about six, as the morning went on, she got sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker. Sister Patty greeted me this, this evening with class. How's Candace feeling? Well, she's better. But after she was sick and had to stay down, she had to cease from activity. She had to take time to rest. She kept saying throughout the whole day, and then yesterday again, she wasn't feeling well. She kept saying both days, I feel so bad that I'm not up. I'm not doing anything. We can't even give ourselves permission to rest when we don't feel well. We're so conditioned that we have to keep moving to add any kind of value that when we stop moving, even for 48 hours, guilt overcomes. In peace, I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. <clears throat> Straight from the slide, exhaustion causes confusion. Confusion creates dangerous situations. Remember, we're in the spiritual context of these slides right now. Confusion creates danger for us spiritually. When we get exhausted, and we don't rest, we're spiritually confused. That confusion creates danger for us. Key point number two, rest provides re-energizing. Rest is part of man's basic physiological needs. Needed. Rest is in fact one of the most vital of such needs. Rest is normally not seen as an option. We usually ignore rest, saying we, we don't have the option. I have to keep working. And so one must make time. One must force the decision. One must insist on personal pause. Rest of one's mind, rest of one's body, rest of one's soul is critically important to good health. It provides relief. It replenishes physically. It replenishes emotionally. It replenishes spiritually. When I said my foot is slipping, your unfailing love, Lord, supported me. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. Rest is a part of man's basic spiritual needs. Rest is vital. I want you to hear this. It's vital to your health, physically, emotionally, mentally, and most definitely spiritually. In the multitude of my anxieties within me, your comforts delight my soul. Make the time, force the decision, insist on the pause for your health, for your benefit, and then for the benefit of those around you. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He'll save. He'll rejoice over you with joy. He'll rest in his love. And he'll joy over thee with singing. Rest one's mind. Rest one's body. Rest one's soul. I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. Replenish physically, replenish emotionally, replenish spiritually. It's scripture. It's the Lord's warning. Think of he he made the, the earth. He created the earth in seven days, in six days, and he rested on the seventh. Rest one seventh of his schedule. And so it is for us. 
Rest provides re-energizing. Rest, it's a key factor. If you learn nothing else tonight, it's a key factor. It contributes to the level at which the body functions adequately, effectively, productively. Muscles and all other parts of the body eventually wear out. That's why rest is needed. Rest replenishes and re-energizes. I'm downstairs, Candace is upstairs. Every, every Tuesday night, this is how we are. I can't imagine what she's thinking as she's watching me give this class because she has had to tell me I've got to rest more. I've got to sleep more. I've got to replenish. So I think this class is, is me for me. And maybe I'm going to finally hear myself speak and give this class because this is first for me. Trust me when I tell you that. Rest replenishes and re-energizes again. Heals, recovers, even betters us. More so than where we were before we rested. We come out of rest stronger than we, when we went down to rest. Let's see if it's, it's supported scripturally. My soul waits silently for God alone. For my expectation is from him. Replenishes, re-energizes better than we were. Again, straight off the slide. Mountain climbing, the seventh principle found throughout the word. It's, it's there. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the, pay, excuse me, the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. But you said we will not walk in it. Ah. This is why rest is so needed, because we get confused when we depend on ourselves. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Rest can also be said this way, be still, or even said this way, wait. That's what he's saying in the, in the word, rest. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know. Rest can also be said this way. Be still and know I am God. Rest provides re-energizing, moving forward. Rest restores expended energy. We're exhausted. We've used up all our gas. Rest is a refill. Rest revitalizes the body, maintains optimum levels so that we can fully function and we can prevent danger and wearing out. Consistent nonstop activity causes us to wear out. Exhaustion creates imbalance. We begin to lean left, lean right. Rest provides that balance lost. Is there any scripture that will support this? In God is my salvation. In God is my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Rest restores expended energy. The Lord is my strength restores expended energy. If you enter into my rest, you will find rest from your striving, from your working, from your nonstop, from your get it done, from your I will not rest till I'm completed. I will rest when I die. My rest will find rest from all your striving, says Hebrews. Rest provides balance. Yes, continue to strive, but rest in between. He is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Rest revitalizes systems to optimum levels. I shall not be moved because I've gained my strength back. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. I read this and I thought sometimes it's just knowing that he knows that can calm all of our fears. Key point number three says nutrition provides replenishment. Food choices affect health. This is natural. Food choices affect health, either negatively or positively. 
effects during the climb, effects immediately afterwards, effects in the future. Good nutrition is critical to healthy maintenance. When we have our games, our, our, uh, I'm coaching high school football, when we have our games on Friday, we begin on Wednesday. So tomorrow at practice, we'll start to tell the kids, water up tonight, 24, excuse me, 48 hours in advance. Start watering up. Start replenishing your body now so that we don't cramp up for two days later. In the future, effects during the climb, effects immediately afterwards, effects in the future. Good nutrition is critical. Proper diet helps to reach and maintain pace and stamina. Proper diet helps to reduce the risk of injury caused by fatigue. Spiritually, what's the connotation? Is it found in the word? For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shall you be, and it shall be well with you. Food choices affect health. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for all the good land which he hath given thee. Good nutrition is critical to healthy maintenance. There's nothing more glorious for us than when Candace goes to her garden and pulls some tomatoes out. And that night we have a salad with her tomatoes. The Lord has blessed our land and we get to eat from it. It's, it's wonderful. And then we have a neighbor, by the way, who brings us zucchini. So it's two times as good. There is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw that it was from the hand of God in Ecclesiastes. More proof, more evidence. Proper diet helps one keep their pace. Proper diet helps one keep their stamina. Nutrition provides replenishing. The impact of nutrition on your health. The unhealthy diet contributes to a failure to achieve any goals. One third of U.S. adults, 33.8%, do not eat healthy. 17% of children are obese, officially obese. That's 12 million, 12 and a half million children are in the obese category. Poor diet, major risks that can cause injury and even death. Smart food choices protect from these issues. So whether therefore you eat, whether therefore you drink, whether therefore whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Healthy diet helps you achieve your goals. Jeremiah says it this way, and for his diet, there was continual diet given of him of the king of Babylon. Every day a portion until the day of his death, all the days of his life. Poor diet is like any poor decision made. They can destroy and undo any and all other good decisions made. I eat well, I eat well, I eat well, and then I eat poorly, and it undoes all that, all that good decision making. And we can do that. I often tell, used to tell my children, if you tell the truth 2,692 times, and you tell a fib once, what will you be known as? A liar. One bad decision undoes all those good decisions. Eat well. When thou hast eaten, and this is spiritually. I want you to understand what we're talking about here. This is eating spiritually well. Consuming good things. Consuming the word. Consuming good conversation. Talking about the things of God. As the one verse says, think on these things. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord. Then I shall bless the Lord thy God with good land, which he hath given thee. Smart food choices help you avoid major risks. Major risks can involve injuries, even death, spiritually. We certainly know that happens on the mountain, but spiritually. Good nutrition, healthy weight. Healthy weight, reduced risk. Healthy weight, increased health. Steps taken in healthy nutrition, maximize health. Maximize health, healthier steps taken, going upward on the mountain. Healthy, healthy nutri nutrients, you stay healthy, you stay active, you stay strong all the way up, all the way down your climb. Physical activity requires change in diet. 
hear that. Physical activity requires change in diet. If we're going to make some changes to climb our own personal mountains, we have to change our diet. Prior to this, I was taking part in things I shouldn't have been taking part of. I want to draw closer to the Lord, different diet. Small, the smallest changes can have the largest effects. But the fruit of the Spirit is, jo is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. So the nine healthy, healthiest nutri nutrients of all are simply the same that you just saw. The healthiest nutrients that you can, you can intake are these. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience is what that means. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. God gives us healthy spiritual nutrients. If you're willing and obedient, you can eat the best of the land. Healthy nutrients keep us spiritually active. Healthy nutrients keep us spiritually strong. So, whether therefore you eat, whether therefore you drink, whether therefore whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. All to the honor, all to the glory of God. As a young investment advisor, probably 35 years ago, I had a wonderful mentor as a client. He was very, very successful Venezuelan man who owned a moving company. He had worked very hard to accumulate his wealth. He was probably 55 years old when I met him. He loved America. He lived in Caracas, Venezuela, but he also lived in Boca Raton. Florida. He loved this country much more so than his own land. But he said we lacked one thing specifically. He said, you Americans don't rest enough. So to prove his point, he constantly invited me to lunch and would keep me away from my office two, sometimes three hours. And he told me the reason why is he was accustomed to two to three hours of shutdown in his home city. The entire city would shut down from 11 to two every day. And so that's what he was accustomed to. And he was trying, I'm sure, to indoctrinate me with this and teach me to rest more. So the scriptures I use tonight point to that same philosophy, rest and replenish. And so think about our walk with the Lord. Clearly we speak the language of prayer. Often, we talk about praying often. And prayer is nothing more, I, don't, I shouldn't say nothing more. Prayer in its simplest form is speaking to God. The part we seem to miss, but I would even say overlook, are the lessons of meditation. And you heard them all tonight. Be still and know. Be still and wait. Meditate. And the lesson of meditation is that's when we listen to God. And so when we see the conversation with God through this lens, I think we understand it better. We, we are often engaged in a one directional communication with the Lord. We speak to him. But we don't often just stop quietly and listen for his answer. Prayer and meditation rest replenish replenish the soul as as with the same vigor that we replenish the body on a mountain climb replenish the soul on a spiritual mountain climb we must hear this we must make the time to rest i don't have the time right i i understand that so make the time to rest we absolutely must take the time to replenish, and we absolutely must find time to listen to the voice of God. Because principle number seven says, take time for rest and nutrition, else we'll never get up the mountain. Here's what the word started with tonight. I'm going to read it to you again. 
and I want you to hear it a little differently. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Hear what he said there. I will give you rest. Doesn't that sound like rest is a gift? I will give you rest. I think it's time for us to receive God's gift of rest. And so tonight's class, I hope, is very timely for each and all of you. Rest, replenish. It does the soul good.